Hello everyone, today we will start a topic which is very important for fabrics during use ok. For some special application this characteristics are very important and these are bursting characteristics of fabrics and tear characteristics, tear strength of fabric. So, this two characteristics they are important not only for apparel type textile, but for industrial textiles or technical textiles particularly bursting is extremely important, but for apparel fabrics bursting is not that important, but when we talk about geotextiles, filter fabric, parachute cloth, bursting strength is very important. So, we will start with bursting strength of textile material. So, when we talk about the tensile testing as we have seen earlier, tensile testing deals with unidirectional characteristics. Thus, it is suitable for fabrics like, like oven fabric where definite warp and wave direction is actually there. Okay. So, now in tensile testing as we have seen it may be a strip testing or grab testing we take strength in one of the directions either it is warp direction or in wave direction. So, then we can express that tenacity that is warp tenacity or wave tenacity and up to this it is ok. Now, when we talk about the tenacity of non oven fabric, where the fibers are aligned at random direction. So, actually we do not know the in which direction fibers are aligned. So, when we try to test non oven fabric of a where fibers say most of the fibers are aligned in at certain angle. Even as a user when we try to measure the strength suppose in lengthwise direction we are trying to measure. So, we will actually end up with a strength which is much lower than the actual strength in this direction. So, it is actually it may give some wrong result. So, this wrong result sometime leads to wrong decision making. Similarly, in case of knitted fabric there is no definite direction where the yarns are aligned. So, in that way it is very difficult to express the strength in terms of tenacity in a particular direction for this non oven fabric and the knitted fabric. Apart from non oven and knitted fabric for some special applications like as I have mentioned the parachute cloth 
or geotextiles or filter fabrics where woven fabrics are used we require to know the strength not only in one direction, but in multi direction multiple direction strength is required. So, in all these cases the tenacity in a particular direction is not going to help us. So, we must know some characteristics which will give us idea about the strength in multi direction when we stress in multi direction. So, in that case busting strength helps to get some idea. So, in case of knitted or non woven fabrics where no definite alignment of yarns fibers are there. So, multi directional force is required and some fabrics as I have mentioned like parachute fabric, filter cloth, sacks, mates when these fabrics are in use the fabrics are stressed in all the direction. So, we need to test the busting strength. So, this type of fabrics like parachute, filter fabric, geotextiles is more likely to fail by busting in service. When we, are, we use this fabric, they are likely to fail in busting, then it is break by the straight tensile fracture. So, in this case, so if we take if we take the tensile test result, then we may land up with a wrong impression about the fabric. Fabric fails across the direction where lowest breaking extension is there that is a very important. Now, suppose we have a fabric which is having a metallic wear. So, this suppose warp is warp is say it is a cotton cotton with weak cotton ok. It is not the strength is not very high, its strength is very weak and in the web direction what we have inserted we have inserted metallic wear says steel wear this is a metal very high strength metallic wear. So, what will happen? So, if we draw the stress strain curve or load elongation curve elongation load elongation curve of say weak cotton this is the cotton with certain extensibility, but the load breaking load is low whereas, the metal say stainless steel or high carbon steel or say carbon fiber its strength. So, this is suppose a carbon fiber it is a very high strength this is the carbon fiber. Now, webbed. So, what will happen when will we test the fabric for busting strength the direction where the extensibility is less. So, this 
the wave direction here the total load will be shared by majority of the load will be shared by the wave and first and the cotton will share where least weight because cotton's load breaking load it will not actually it will not share at that time and majority on all the load will be on the uh, wave so the total use of the utilization of the loads ten, tensile characteristics will not be there if the extensibility extension characteristics of both warp and wave are different. So, on the other hand if we use some weak uh, the relatively weaker yarn, but their breaking extension are same like we can draw again. So, in warp what we have seen this is relatively weaker moderate yarn, but in warp this is in warp and another yarn in wave to when we are using we are using the wave if we test the tensile characteristics of wave is almost same. So, what will happen during wasting when warp and wave they are getting extended both warp and wave will actually share the load. So, ultimately we will get the higher busting strength. Similarly, if we have fabric from same yarn suppose we are producing fabric from the some same yarn, but the crimp say warp crimp is much higher much lower sorry much lower than wave crimp. So, warp crimp is lower so warps are, are straight suppose this is so warp there is no such crimp, but in wave if we see wave t answer so crimpy. And this fabric if we actually test if we test for busting the problem will be that the fabric the direction with lesser crimp will share load maximum load will be shared by that direction warp direction, but wave during initial stretching it will get straightened and it will not share the load initially. So, first the warp threads will break then immediately the load will be load will be transferred to the wave and then it will break it will bust. So, busting means even a single direction yarn breaks that means the fabric totally fails. So, we need the busting actually simultaneously if warp breaks that means fabric is actually finished. So, we main actual main reason is that here the warp and wave extensibility should be same breaking extension we have to maintain same that is why for busting strength for any fabric which we use for busting strength or where busting characteristics is important in that case that we have to have fabric almost what is called it is a balanced fabric where warp direction characteristics and wave direction characteristics are exactly almost same if there are there is some difference then we will not be actually we will not be able to utilize the strength of both warp and wave direction. So, that is how we have to use a fabric 
which is actually uniform in all the direction. So, fabric fails across the direction where which has lowest breaking extension. Okay. So, that is we have actually I have just explained because in all the directions the fabric undergo the same extension as it is a bursting. So, it, it will actually uh, extension will be same in all the direction and this is not necessarily the direction with the lowest strength. Okay. So, lowest that I have just explained it is not necessary the, the direction which will break which will actually damage get damaged first it is not necessarily the lowest strength it is the direction with lowest elongation breaking elongation. Now, this curve as so both warp and weft they are exactly same same that the crimp type of yarn has been arranged in such a fashion that they are extensively load elongation curve is exactly same. So, because this is good because the pressure will be carried equally by the both warp and weft and they will actually share they will get added. Now, this one here the weft which is higher strength warp which is say weaker with a less this is poor this type of fabric as far as busting strength is concerned this is poor performance it will give because the warp warp will be will break the which is weak warp will break fast then total load will be transferred to the weft. Okay. So, that will be sequentially they will share load which is not which will not result the higher break busting strength and similarly this one also poor that we have discussed because only the strong wave will break fast. So, strong yarn we are breaking fast and the total load will be share then transferred to the weaker warp. So, the testing methods are there are basically two different types of testing methods are there one is diaphragm type test. So, where a circular fabric sample is clamped over a rubber diaphragm by means of annular clamp ring and an increasing fluid pressure. So, some uh, fluid uh, is uh, kept may be uh, glycerin or some type of uh, flu fluids are there. So, fluid pressure is applied to the inside basically inside the diaphragm until the specimen is burst. So, and the pressure in the fluid increases as such as that the rate the busting time busting time is within 20 plus minus 3 second. So, we can increase the fluid pressure in such a fashion the and knowing the extensibility of uh, the fabric and busting strength of the fabric. So, we can increase the fluid pressure at a certain rate. Okay. So, that busting strength busting takes place within plus minus 3 second 20 plus minus 3 second. So, here the technique is very simple. Now, here some fluid you have to actually press some fluid and here we are keeping putting the fabric sample. Here this rubber diaphragm is there and when the fluid is actually pressed we are pumping the fluid here. So, it is pressed so, the diaphragm will get deflected and over the diaphragm, diaphragm the fabric sample is there. So, as the diaphragm get extended the fabric will extend and after that the fabric will break burst. So, that and busting means once the one of the directions either warp and wave direction breaks then it stopped. So, that is the maximum pressure we actually measure. So, height of the diaphragm is noted. Okay. So, the height of the diaphragm is noted and the pressure without the specimen 
for that height is recorded as P 2. Now, here the problem is that the pressure see the pressure which we are applying here the pressure here is the pressure required to burst the fabric and second is the to extend the diaphragm at that level. So, for diaphragm busting, so during busting that to for to extend the diaphragm we need require certain pressure. So, this height just before height uh, busting we will note down the height okay, h. So, initially with fabric if we know the the pressure required suppose p is the press p 1 is the pressure required and during that time we have to note down the height of the diaphragm and then without fabric. So, if we extend the diaphragm at to that height suppose that required p 2 pressure. So, effectively for busting the fabric alone we require delta p which is p 1 minus p 2 that is the actual pressure required to burst the fabric okay. that much correction we have to do. So, p 1 minus p 2 is the actual bursting strength of the specimen okay. initially it was p 1 then it has become p 2 is required. So, here what we have to do we have to test one blank test without fabric we have to test the blank test, but blank test is normally done after the busting of the fabric because we do not know the extensibility of the fabric. So, for that the we have to note down the height and accordingly we have to carry out the blank test. This is the busting strength tester here this is uh, the liquid here liquid is kept here and pressure is the applied using the piston here and the pressure of the liquid is measured here by the pressure gauge. This is the pressure gauge and this red color it is a diaphragm diaphragm and here it is a blue is the test sample we are and we have to clamp. Okay. So, now let us see the animation here. Now, fabric is placed clamped. Okay. Now, it is a clamping is a we have tightened that. Eh? So, the fabric is clamped tightly, so that there is no leakage okay. and then the pump will start pumping uh, that a piston will be pressed inside, so that fluid pressure liquid pressure here increases. Okay. Now, piston is so piston start the liquid pressure start increasing the liquid pressure is increasing by and it is measured by the pressure gauge. So, it is a pressure is increasing and this diaphragm along with the fabric is a getting extended. Now, this rubber diaphragm is extending pressure is increasing liquid pressure and and it is busted. Okay. Once it is busted you have to stop the, the pressure increase and then we can note down the pressure required to bust and this is actually here it is a it is a without uh, with fabric. Now, we can calculate we can measure the this height the and this height is noted down and after that what we have to do we have to test uh, this is the whatever pressure we are getting here say 100 it is a P 1 okay. and this uh, reached to 100 and fabric is broken the busted and it is P 1 and after that we will remove the fabric and we will again start the blank test and 
till this height is reached and then the pressure required will be definitely less than 100. Suppose it is a 50, then the 100 minus 50, the 50 will be the effective bursting strength of the fabric. Main disadvantage of this type of this technique is that fabrics with very high extensibility like knitted fabric it creates problem. We cannot test uh, knitted fabric here because the stretchability of knitted fabric may be much much higher than the stretchability of the rubber diaphragm. That means, the rubber diaphragm will burst before the fabric burst. So, that so this type of method is not suitable for high fabric with high extensibility ok. Like knitted fabric cannot be tested in this type of machine uh, diaphragm type bursting strength tester only oven fabric and that to lower stretchability is actually preferable. And here as I have mentioned you need blank test ok which needs accuracy means accuracy in measuring height which is not that simple. So, there must be some extra arrangement to measure the height accurately. Accurate height if we do not measure then the P 2 value will be wrong and that will lead to the wrong interpretation of the result ok. And this P 2 value basically depends on the on uh, the extensibility of the fabric. So, extensibility if it is high extensibility high then it has to stretch more the rubber has to be stretched more. So, distance calibration chart is required. So, that you have to calibrate the distance. Other disadvantage is that this it has been observed that liquid spilling take place ok may occur and that is by if we do not actually seal the instrument properly the liquid from inside may leak ok. Another thing is the cream percent in warp and weft plays important role that I have already mentioned. For similar yarn the direction with lower cream percent will break. So, that means that cream percent is actually important here it is overall in bursting it is important. And when the stretchability is high so, in that case we cannot use as I have mentioned the bursting strength tester that diaphragm type bursting ten strength tester we cannot use. So, we have to use another method which is called ball bursting strength. It is much simpler and for uh, fabric like knitted fabric we have to we can use and here normal tensile strength tester with some modification we can use it is simple here. Suppose, there is a we have, have we have to have one annular ring ok annular ring is there and which is fixed on a it is platform of any say strength tester ok. And then what we have to put we are putting the fabric sample we are placing fabric sample here this is the our fabric sample we have clamped the fabric sample here ok. And in the top jaw this is the bot and from movable part this is the movable part of movable jaw of the tensile tester ok. Movable jaw of the tensile tester and where the this is the strain gauge is there ok. And here one plunger with a ball at that circular ball at the tip ok. Now, once this is moving down this ball will penetrate and will actually penetrate through this fabric and this fabric will be will be extended and till it is bursting. So, this type of extension of the fabric will be there and ball is actually pressing the this fabric and then it will. So, the advantage of this principle is that there is no limit of extensibility. We can set and we can actually 
press the ball against the this fabric and the fabric will break and here it the load is recorded here and the this uh, transducer the load cell is it is a compressive type load cell. So, this will actually be loaded in this direction. So, there will be a compressive type load cell and and here in earlier in diaphragm type busting strength, strength tester we measure in terms of pressure okay, Newton per square meter or uh, say Pascal and some uh, any other unit. So, here it measures in terms of Pascal, but here we measure in terms of strength Newton. So, that th these are the difference, but the advantage of this machine is that here we can actually test for any fabric with any extensibility and another thing is that the for any many practical use this type of this uh, uh, situation takes place. Basically here the pressure through some extensible item is it is it is not applied in actual application like this is true this type of method is applicable where we are talking about the parachute type fabric. Okay. But if we talk about say geotextile or any other uh, other type of fabric this may also be used. So, both the systems are um, useful, but this uh, the diaphragm type uh, is uh, used for the oven fabric top typically with less extensibility or uh, for fabrics with high extensibility we can use this fabric, this uh, ball busting strength. So, diaphragm busting strength is not suitable for high stretchable fabric errors due to diaphragm extension that is the negative point of that and the, the test can be performed using an attachment. See, so, this ball busting strength testing we can just attach one extra attachment with a standard tensile testing instrument okay. that is as I have mentioned. So, 25 millimeter diameter ball is pushed through a stretched fabric and force required is recorded. This is the arrangement that I have mentioned and here this is the ball is there at a certain diameter and stressed through the fabric sample. This is a fabric sample. In diaphragm busting strain tester pressure is measured, but here the force is measured no, no limit to the amount of stretch is there and the load cell operates in compression mode not in extension mode. So, after the busting now we will uh, start discussing on tear testing which is also an extremely important characteristics not only for apparel type tester fabric, but for industrial fabric it is very important. Okay. A fabric what is tear? Now, let us first try to understand a fabric tears when it is snagged by a sharp object. So, there must be some initiation otherwise tearing will not be there. This sharp object may be some hook, some knife edge, something, some nails. So, there must be some it and, and the immediate the immediate small puncture. So, some uh, any pointed point puncture is converted into long rib. So, that is tear. So, there must be some initiation and then there will be progression. So, so that initiation is by some sharp object. Okay. Any blunt object normally it is not uh, they do not actually uh, generate any tear and then the convert to long rib it is by a small extra effort. So, that if you if we start the tearing then the tearing will continue ok. And it is it is the most common type of fabric failure that is important and important for industrial fabric exposed to rough handling like tents, sacks. So, they are actually subjected to rough handling there will be some pointed object sharp object and then this 
the tearing will start. In some applications, we may require we, we require the low tearing strain like adhesive tape, bandages. So, this type of fabric we require low tearing strength and in most of the applications we require high tearing strength. So, we must understand the actual basics of the tear strength, how to control the tear strength of a particular fabric. So, we can control by controlling the type of yarn, type of weave. So, let us discuss all these aspects here. So, what are the factors affecting the tear strength? How, we, how can we control the tear strength of a fabric? So, if we know, if we see the fabric tearing, either it tears singly, single yarn one by one. Okay. So, this is important here. So, if we are talking about say woven fabric and at this point sub tearing started. Now, these yarns are broken. Now, there is sharp object which cut this fabric. this is waved and these are the warp here. Now, here if this direction, if this is the direction, this is the warp, this is the direction of tear, then it is it's actually the tearing will is taking place in wave tear, this is the wave tear. Warp yarn is not getting affected, so this tear is called wave tear. On the other direction, on the other hand, if the tearing takes place this direction, this will be warp tear. In this way, we can differentiate. Now, once the fabric starts tearing, so this is say A side and this is B side. These two sides will get actually separated like this. So, if tear is there, now these two sides will get actually separated. Okay, right and then tearing will occur and during this during this force on the last yarn this is the yarn so it's the first yarn here first yarn there will be a force lateral force which will try to push the yarn and form a grouping if it cannot slide the yarn this yarn cannot slide then the all the loads of tearing load will be on at this point of the yarn and then the yarn the single yarn will break immediately and then the load will be transferred to the next yarn okay immediately this load will get transferred to the next yarn and that yarn will break. So, sequentially the yarns will break and the tearing strength will be very low because individual threads are breaking one by one. As why? Because the arrangement is that the yarns are not sliding each other. So, this yarns are not sliding, so that is why this is this yarn they are breaking one by one. And suppose we have made some arrangement, we have changed the type of yarn so that and type of structure, this yarns are able to slide during the tearing force application. So, if this yarns are suppose sliding, this yarn red yarn will actually come close to the blue yarn. So, they will actually the red will not break, but red has slided to close to B. So, close to this blue yarn. So, they have formed a double yarn and this double yarn will again slide to third yarn 
and in that way they will form a group of threads before they break and they due to this is due to the sliding of the threads and this is grouping of the thread and ultimately we will see the tear strength is becoming higher and higher. So, basic thing is that to control tear strength we have to take care that whether there is sliding is, is taking place or not and if sliding takes place in the yarn then the tear strength will be high. So, one can have simple experiment suppose we are taking one fabric cotton fabric so weak normal cotton fabric we are taking with relatively open structure this is the fabric with relatively open structure fabric and here we are having say tear this is the tear direction and from where we are we want to measure tear now this cotton fabric this is fabric a same cotton fabric what we have done only we have dipped into a starch solution simply we are dipping this fabric with a starch solution. So, any size material we are giving and fabric become relatively say stiffer does not matter this is for our experimentation what we are doing and this fabric is B fabric with starch. This will be. Now, here again we are trying to we are we have put a cut mark for tearing. Now, what will happen here? So, this they, they are same fabric a same yarn. Now, if we test if we test for tensile testing we will observe that there is no change effectively there is no change because only simply we have dipped in light starts not heavy starts light starts. Now, if we test the fabric this is the raw cotton raw grey cotton fabric and this is with starch. Now, if we test the tear strength of this fabrics which one will give the higher tear strength definitely the fabric will have fabric A will have higher tear strength and there will be significant drop in tear strength of fabric B. Why? Because by starch treatment what we have done? we have blocked this intersection with the starch material. Okay. So, by doing these things what we have done? We have actually stopped the free sliding of the threads. The threads are not actually sliding here that means, there will be sequential breakage of thread. So, this thread will break first then this thread then this thread this thread like that. So, it will never reach a higher point, but on the other hand the fabric A where nothing is the normal cotton yarn is there the, the due to the wax content and any other things these threads will keep on sliding and then it will give a higher higher uh, tear strength. Now, let us do let us uh, perform another experiment same warp and waved yarns are there. So, let us take same warp and waved yarn and this is the warp yarn same say cotton yarn same warp and waved yarns are used this is fabric say A and here and the fabric B where what we have done we have increased the ends per inch and peaks per inch. This is the lower lower and this is higher this fabric is compact. compact fabric. So, nothing is only this fabric is compact, but this fabric is open structure same warp and waved yarn, 
Now, what will happen if we test the tensile testing tensile strength definitely this B will give very high tensile strength tensile breaking strength will be high in case of B and mass per unit because this fabric will be heavy. So, apparently this fabric is good because higher tensile strength and it will have higher bursting strength. So, higher everything, but if we test for tear strength for tear strength we will see that this for tear strength this fabric will fail and the open structure fabric will have higher tear strength than this close fabric although they are made of same yarn same same warp and weft yarn and again the reason is that here the sliding takes place because the of the open structure the threads will get it will get it will slide and they will have the, the chance of accumulation so in compact fabric the threads break sequentially one by one but here they break before breaking they actually accumulate and ultimately the tear strength is had. So, that is a common phenomena of fabric with open structure will have higher tear strength. Similarly, suppose yarn we have made same yarn same strength yarn of the same strength the A B and now C fabric strength characteristics are same stress strain behavior are exactly same. Okay. and EPI, PPI are same, but here this this yarn which we have made here this is with a very high friction very high friction here what we have made. So, higher friction at this fabric is relatively yarn to yarn friction is low that means as it is a high friction so that it will actually prevent free sliding of threads so in that case the yarn here with a lower friction will slide and then it will give here the tear strength will be here this is actually we can test we take one normal yarn normal cotton yarn okay, grey cotton yarn and the same construction if we say test with the scour or bleached considering that bleaching or scouring is not deteriorating the yarn strength. So, in case of scoured or bleached cloth the tear strength will be less than the normal cloth this is not because of the uh, drop in strength if we test the tensile strength this may be same if we consider they are same still the scoured or bleached cloth will have less tear strength because of increase in friction. Okay. So, the thread breaks singly or in very small groups. So, grouping is important. So, if we think of the two fabrics one fabric is made of same yarn same ends per inch fix per inch one fabric is made of plain open fabric plain weave another is say satin. So, satin fabric will give higher tear strength because in satin number of interlacements are less. So, threads can actually slide past each other easily and grouping will take place. So, grouping is important. So, we can play with the structure, we can play with the thread density, we can play with the type of yarn to increase the or decrease the tear strength. So, single thread strength is of great importance. So, strength single thread strength is definitely important, but this is actually showing up in the tear strength and in loose fabric structure grouping of thread occurs resulting higher tear strength. So, loose fabric structure as I have already explained. So, what are the factors uh, other factors also fabric with smooth yarn 
So, with a yarn with lower friction like gray yarn will have higher tear strength because any factor which allows the yarns to slide and form group will increase the tear strength. So, high set fabric reduce the thread movement. So, tear strength drops considerably. So, if we increase the end per inch fixed per inch that will drop. Now, there are different tear strength measurement. Okay. Now, one of them it is a it is called single rib tear test. So, or it is called tongue tear strength. So, this is a single rib tear strength. So, this is very simple test method where we test the tear strength. So, there is a strip fabric strip is there okay. and here in the fabrics we, we put a cut mark and this cut mark we are actually after putting the cut mark what we do one side we put it in one jaw of a tensile tester another side another part we are putting in the bottom jaw of a tensile tester and we test in any normal tensile tester which works in CRE principle and then we keep uh, doing the tensile test. So, this is the way we perform the tensile strength. So, we get the load elongation plot. So, maximum strength peak we can take as a reading. It goes through only one cut mark. Okay. Here at the tail A is clamped with the lower jaw and B is with the upper jaw. Speed of the machine it is a normal it is 50 millimeter per minute okay, or 30 300 millimeter per minute. So, we can have different speeds as per the requirement. The separation of jaw causes the tear okay, to proceed through the uncut part. So, initially we put cut then through uncut part it uh, progress average of 5 highest peaks are taken as tear strength and depending on the direction of tear as I have mentioned the tear strength of warp or web direction are reported. Okay. Next, it is another uh, method which is actually uh, similar to the single rib tear strength, it is a called double rib tear strength. Here, instead of single cut, we put two cut. Here. This is the double rib where we, are, we have marked two cut marks, and this middle portion we are putting in an one jaw and bottom two portion we are taking to another jaw. So, in this way we test okay, and then the tearing goes on in this way this is the tearing. So, that similar way we can test here the central one is gripped in one jaw and outer two in other jaw two tiers are simultaneously made. So, it is known as double rib tear strength testing. So, the main problem with this type of tear strength the single or double rib tear strength what happens suppose this is warp direction. So, we want to set a test wave direction this is a waved these are Waved yarn. Waved yarn, and what we are doing? This is these are the warp yarns. And in this, this is this red is warp. Now, in this test what we are doing? We are testing the warp strength, warp tear strength okay, as warp yarns are broken. Now, here if the fabric the strength of waved say warp strength, warp yarn strength is much higher than then Wave yarn strength. 
So, warp yarns are very strong, wefts are weaker, much weaker. So, if the difference is very high, in that case what will happen? If we try to test, so we are trying to break the warp which is stronger. In that case what will instead of moving the direction of tear in this fashion, they may change the direction and this type of direct take, take place, this type of tear will start taking place. Because the load will also be on the wave direction as warp is stronger. So, then it will it may so happen the wave may start breaking. So, this will give a wrong result. So, to avoid this thing there is another technique which is called wing rip tear test. Okay. So, what happened it does not transfer the direction of tear. In other methods due to wide difference in tear strength, wide difference in tear strength the warp and wave direction of tear changes from high to low okay, that is uh, as I have mentioned and during the test the point of tear remain substantially in line with the center of the grip. So, in wing rip test this, prob this problem of shifting changing the direction is not there, here prob the point of break is always at the center okay, at the center of the grip. Now, the system here is that the fabric this is the strip I have cut it you may we, it may so have, we may not cut also just to show and we are having certain angle it is typically I think 55 degree angle okay, certain angle we can cut here and then this is the direction where we can grip the top jaw is gripping in this fashion this will this direction this will be this will be horizontal okay this will keep horizontal okay. this is grip and similarly this will be horizontal in this way we just grip okay. and then we start tearing and the point of tear will be exactly at the center of grip always so this is the grip and at the center of grip grip always this point of tear will be there, it will never shift due to this arrangement. Okay. So, this is wing rip test just to eliminate the earlier problem. So, this is the it is a 55 degree we grip this fabric and this is the testing. Okay. Here the point of tear is always at the center of the grip. Always. So, it will not never it will not shift to other direction. So, this for uh, this type of fabric even for non woven fabric where there may be some shifting due to wide difference in strength in different direction. So, for non woven type fabric we must use this type of test because otherwise the tear direction may change. Okay. So, wing rip test for technical textile we use it is not suitable for loose structure that is the disadvantage here because the arrangement which we have I have shown here, here due to this arrangement here the yarn sliding takes place. The other test yarn sliding is not that prominent, but if the loose fabric structure is there the yarn will slide past and instead of tearing the it fails with the slippage of yarn. So, that is the main disadvantage of this type of testing and test based on CRE type tester and highest peak or mean of say 5 peaks are taken as tear strength okay. and the last instrument is the it is a it is element drop tear test. Here we do not measure the tear strength, here we measure the tear energy. Okay. So, let us see 
the animation initially the it is we are bringing it to this pendulum to the initial position okay and here the actually it's gauged the scale is there okay scale is there it starts with the lowest value here lowest value it's a 10 20 30 depending on the requirement okay first what we do we to we have to test the instrument whether it's a it's a working perfectly the setting is perfectly so initial a uh, blank test is done okay blank test now what we will show this is bringing so it's a this is there and then we are bringing the pointer in the initial point and this is the stop arrangement this is the stop arrangement now now we are releasing the this pendulum for blank test now it's released by pressing this stop arrangement and pendulum is swinging and as there is no restriction this should swing to its extreme point because whatever the potential energy stored these are being released and this is showing the zero point this is actually reaching at the zero point so this pointer is showing zero point that means the instrument is working perfect this is actually set perfectly now what we will do we will have to put the fabric sample okay now again we are bringing the pendulum to its initial position okay and then bringing the pointer again it to initial position here and then we are placing the fabric sample so we have to place the fabric sample. now fabric sample is actually the as per the specification fabric sample is cut and it is gripped in the by the this say and we are putting a cut mark standard cut mark by a knife which is actually at a, a part of the instrument this cut mark is put here so that the it initiates the tearing now once we release the this total pendulum pendulum will swing and due to the potential energy stored here this will start tearing the fabric till it is fully tear and then if the tearing and then the pendulum will take some energy to tear the fabric. So, it will not swing back to the initial position. So, it will swing little bit less than that that it is directly it is a gauge here it starts with say 0, 10, 20, 30 depending on the tear strength tear energy required it the pendulum will show direct reading. So, this gives the now it is started now tearing is taking place although in this animation it is not showing the separation it will separate basically it will totally separate out and then it is swinging, but it takes some energy it is not going to up to that this point here as per this it is showing say 10, 20, 30 say 40. 40 is the actually the energy required or the waste energy required to tear the fabric. So, that is this instrument gives direct reading of the tear strength, okay. tear energy this actually element of tear strength tester it gives the energy to tear the fabric. So, pendulum type ballistic tester which measures the energy loss during tearing energy loss equal to tear force into distance loss of potential energy that is work done and finish this session. Thank you.